All right, so this is part two of our example of creating our own custom IP core for the dip switch and the LED. Okay, so we already created the two IP cores. Now we're gonna see how we put it all together as a system on chip. So make a new project. Save it someplace. I've done some of the work already. So I'll show how to get started and then I'll switch the ones that are done already. So no files we're adding. We're using the RD board. All right, so what we'll need to do is we have the dip switch and the LED. We need to add them to this project. So we're gonna go to settings, IP, repository. So on the repository, we need to add in the dip switch and the LED. So we're gonna go to the plus, And you're gonna go down to where it says, so here's the example I did for the dip switch. You see it has the IO repository. I'm gonna select it. And you see that it says it wants to add to our example dip switch. Then we'll do the same thing for our LED. And it'll add in the LED. All right, so now we're gonna do the creation of our system on chip. Create a block diagram. Okay, in this block diagram, we're gonna add in our micro blaze. Go to our board adding in our system clock. Then we're gonna add our dip switch and our LED. Okay, so we do the run block animation. You know, select the size of memory for our micro blaze. Run connect automation. Oh, it's not done yet. We have to wait. Connecting all four devices. On our clock, remember we got to change the reset. We run the connection. Okay, so let's redraw this. Okay, we're gonna have to make changes. So let's zoom in so we can see our dip switch and the LED. So I already pre-built this and I realized I made some errors on part number one. So I'll show you how to go back in and fix them. So if you click your device, here's the dip switch. And you go down to where it says edit an IP packager. So load up all the files for the dip switch IP core that we created. So on the LED and on the dip switch, I made two errors. One error was when we scroll down, we see the component for the lower level, which is the AXI. I forgot to add in the input and the output that we added to the entity. So dip pin for the dip switch, LED pin for the LED switch. And on the dip switch, 
when I connected it, I, I wrote out data pin, data pin, it should be dip and dip. So you can always come back and edit your files. When you edit the files, you gotta make sure you do this packaging, package IP, you do everything that does not have a check mark. You run the whatever command it has listed there, and then you do the repackage. That's gonna be important. The other thing is, once you start editing, these files become outdated, they'll need to be updated. You'll have some error, not an error, you have a different color bar showing on top that says files are out of date. Somewhere down here will have something about IP reports and you can rerun them and hopefully that brings them up into date. There was other items that, different messages, I just kept clicking on them until they worked. Uh, next item we gotta do is the pins. You gotta make them actual pins. So you're gonna select that pin and you see a little pencil pops out, right click. And you're gonna hit this, make external. Nope, that was the wrong one, sorry. So right click. No, nope, that's not it. Let me get the right command. All right, you're gonna right click and we're gonna do create port. So I'll have the name of the pin that we're gonna use, the pin, the input, that was three, four uh, bits. And on the LED, we're gonna do it again. Create port. And we can regenerate. And we see we have everything connected. Next item you're gonna to need to do is, we're gonna to have to have where these pins are connected for. So we're gonna add a source at a constraint file that we already have. You know, RDA master we're gonna use. And the constraint file opens up. We're gonna go down we're gonna start using our dip switches. And the name I give to them, we're dip pin. So I'll go back and rename all of these. Dip pin. Dip pin. In. Go down to our LEDs. And these were all LED pins. So I'll add that name. And then we save this. Then once we are finished adding the constraint files, remember we're gonna do create HDL wrapper. We're gonna let the software manage it. Once you're done with that, you can run synthesis, implementation, generate the bitstream. You'll do export hardware. Make sure the include bitstream is checked off and then you can launch the SDK.
All right, so this will take some time to build. I already have one built and I have the SDK part written up. One thing that's gonna happen is you'll need to include the X parameter since we did not have a GPIO that was from the board, the X GPIO header file did not get created for us. So I took it from the old uh, project and I just copied everything that was in there into this file called X, uh, GPIO and I'm using this one to write on. Because really I'm gonna be using this read register and write register. If you want, you could just copy these define commands. I find that these the macro uh, functions are real easy for us to use. Okay, the X parameters, it has the addresses that we need. So it has X param, example LED, base address, example dip switch, base address. So these two addresses, I just have them here so I could copy them into the file easier. So when a program write, runs, I wrote five to the LEDs. I was just checking the LEDs on their own. That's not really needed. We have this main while loop running. The while loop is gonna read the dip switches, store that in the value X, and then write that value X to the LEDs. So in these functions, I'm writing the base address, comma, this is the offset. We're using register zero, so it's zero here. Then we have what we want to write on the right register. Okay, so remember, we want to get this to run, program the FPGA. Once you've done that, right click, launch on hardware. So let me show you the board working. So we see all the LEDs are off. Click one switch, you see one LED turns on. Second LED, third LED, fourth LED. You know, I could turn off different lights. You see that they follow. So that gets us through how to create our own custom uh, hardware and how to interface it with the microcontroller. Now, we'll have another video that talks about how we do stuff a little bit more complex with our project of the video game system.